OK, we're going to go with this photograph on the broads again. The reason I like this one particularly is the light we can have coming down from the sky here. I'm going to make a bit more of that. And the uh, shimmering light over the water that I want to try dry brushwork with to show you how that can be done. First of all, what brushes are we going to use? Well, I think that I should be able to get away with just these three, I hope. My oval mop, a small round pointed, and my rake brush. This one I bought recently, which is finer than many of the rakes. If we look at this rake, it's got quite a wide um, rake end, which I think would be a little bit too much for this particular painting. I want a finer brushwork, so I'm going to try this new one from the SAA here, and uh, see if we can get these dry brush effects with that that I want for this very light shimmering of the water. As you know, I like to experiment and try new things. Sometimes we have to. In this case, although I was doing dry brushwork, I needed to explore later with uh, some white acrylic. So this uh, actual demonstration is going to be as much about that, how we can use white paint or white acrylic over watercolour to bring back the sparkle of the paper. So, we'll start off. I've got to dampen my watercolours first. And I'll just put a little bit onto the, uh, onto the green. Okay, now, set the painting as simple as possible. I'm only going to use a few colours. I want quite a lot of wet into wet into this. So I'm going to start off with my yellow ochre. And just put a very light wash of that along the top here. I'm going to be painting wet into wet and wet next to wet in this painting quite a lot so I've got to work very very quickly because I don't want the paint to dry. There we go. And into that I want to place a little bit of this burnt sienna on that top edge and let that come wet into wet. As I'm painting on a slight angle it means that this paint is going to drop down in, which is quite a nice thing. And I'm going to put some clean water along here and let that paint just come down into it. So we get a little bit of white showing here and there. We'll just let those colours drop down into that wet by gravity. Now then, straight up into my uh, blue greys. So I'm going to take lots of the ultramarine blue prepare that ready. Into that ultramarine blue I'm going to put a bit of that burnt sienna. That will give me that lovely blue grey. There we are. Now back again. While it's still wet I want to take some of this yellow ochre and the uh, burnt sienna and just drop it in along here. I mustn't let that edge get hard. All the way along right up into here. So we're going to be painting wet into wet now, into layers. That's given me that. Now to take my grey wash, or to take my grey, make it quite strong and drop it into here. And I can control the amount of cool and warm by the amount of blue that I, I put into the, the mixture. Nice big strokes. Really much, much stronger. I want some, because remember the watercolour is going to dry lighter. It always dries lighter than when you put it on, so I want this effect of this rainy sky coming down here, right down into here while it's still wet. We get these layers of this lovely blue grey. Flooding one into another here, right across, a bit more blue in that more blue across that far side so I really want to pile in that blue across here and let it come right down to there because that side it doesn't uh... there we are now now continuing down I'll take some of the yellow ochre again and continue down into here that yellow ochre thinly leaving a bit of white there, round my sails right down to the horizon line here, a 
Right, whilst that's still wet into there, we want to get our wet into wet effects. So we come back to a little more of the Bart Sienna. I'm just going to come along this bottom edge with that. There we go. We know that's a bit harder there. And into that I start to place my ultramarine blue with a little touch of the brown so we get a much softer, lighter colour here. What I'm going to do is just drag that through into a slight raise there. And just up and through here just a little bit now. I'm going to take a bit of clean water and just, just drag it up through here so we get the effect of these rays coming up and through into the cloud. Special effects. There we go. Now come down again. Much more of that blue. And the belt sienna. And again we're going to come along underneath here. Right down around the boat. Be too, too grey now. A bit more blue it comes up to here. Just dabbling it on here. Bring that blue all the way into here. Much more blue. Coming down to here. into that. Now along that bottom edge I want a much stronger orange so I'm going to take some of the yellow ochre and the burnt sienna and just make a much stronger orange along here. As if the sun is just gleaming through there and I'm going to go right up to that bit of paint and let it drop drag in. Here the same right into that, let that drag through that windmill. I'm going to use a little bit of gouache with this later as well I think. We'll see why. Right back to my blue here again and the grey mixture and we'll just get the feeling of the rain in the distance coming down through some of this. The rays of light shining down. Which will blend in softly. Let's try and get this pull down to get the, the rays of light just coming through. but it'll straighten out as we, as we dry the thing out later. This paper is actually very absorbent and slightly um, annoying in that it's uh, a little bit blotting papery. That's a lovely effect we can get for the sky look. Now back into the top there, I can drop a little bit more dark back in there. A little bit darker at the top. I know we've already done that once but I just want to get a bit more. We 
you really do get this feeling of a late evening sky, stormy sky. And I say it was because we actually sat in the pub having drinks while it rained in between and just hoped we'd get back out again and it wouldn't be too wet on our return journey in the boat. Right, there we have our effects of light and, um, I'm going to spread the brush now and just drag it through here just a little bit more to get these effects of this light coming down. I want it too bright back here. Just some little bits of light. Little bits of, uh, a little bit more brown in places. There we are. Right, now down to the water. I've got to finish off here yet. Just forgot that bit. And while I'm waiting, I'm going to... Um, right, next on to the, uh, the water here then. And obviously these colours are reflecting from the sky, so I'm going to mix up some of that deep blue colour with the brown. Hunchmarine blue and the... Um, about Sienna. There we are. And the first thing I want to do is just do some dry brushwork on this um, yellow ochre and Sienna just a little bit. Set it right down. Quite thin paint and quite a dry brush. And let's see if we can just get the effects of that coming over. I'm going to dry brush you. So I dried the brush out there but let it glow through here, gleaming out at us. And a few vertical marks as well amongst that, just to get the feeling of the reflections of the water. Don't make all your marks vertical on when you're painting water. A lot of the marks, uh, so all your marks horizontal when you're painting water. A lot of the marks will be, in depth, will be vertical. And especially in the depth of the water, and I just want to get this feeling of, of the shimmer by bringing some marks downward there. Right. Now I'm going to take my rake and see what this can do. I want to use this rake in a sort of dry brush technique this time. So it's coming in from the sides here. You can use it sideways like that. Quite a lot of light showing through darker at the edges here. A fair bit on my brush, just tickling it in. Some of this is darker than other places. So we're experimenting and exploring with the different brushes to get different effects as well. But this is giving me the effect I want for these very light ripples here by just twisting the brush and uh, just slightly dry brush on the surface as well and then we want to put some again the verticals, look at the verticals here as well go back to my mop now get the mop coated and this the same. We'll start to bring in a little more of these little ripple marks along the edges. So we want to get the effect of Shimmering, rippling grey sky. And we're using a, a knot paper, so it's it's not really rough, but just a little. Not rough nor smooth, just a little. And we've got the shimmer going on now. If we were lucky, although this paper is very absorbent, we might just be able to lift a little out in between like this, use my brush to suck up some of the paint and just lift a bit back out again. So wet the paper, 
the brush end and just try and lift some of it out so we get some lighter areas back. Right, leaving that aside, let's go back now to our, our reeds. And I was talking about using some viridian, which is a cool green. And I shall drop some blue into that later, but let's just get that in at the moment, all the way along here right down to the water there and across down here, down here down here right down into here I'm just going to soak it in I'm going to start using little marks like this with the tip of the brush just to try and get the feeling of rushes and reeds coming up especially here in the foreground just to start off with a bit more detail as I go along that's going to be reflecting out into the water as well. Right through the back here. Right through here. And again, dry brushwork coming down, bring the green down through, sparkling into the water here amongst these other colours. Hardly any marks going across, you see, but a lot of them coming down would get the green into the water. going. Now while they're still wet, we again we'll take our same blue ultramarine and I'm going to go along the top edge of this here, all the way along there, giving an effect of some trees in behind here. Letting that come into the green. It's drying very quickly, which is a bit of a nuisance, but we'll, we'll manage. Just get the feeling of these distant trees here. Windmills over there. Right down through into amongst the greens. Through here. All the way along. Just feeling our away with this. That green just gives me a background. I don't want it light at all. I want it quite dull because of the effect of the light. Same here, the blue coming along distant uh, trees. Going on behind here as well. Through behind that. Then I want to start doing that under the rushes and reeds down here. I'm going to lose all that bright green. Now to make another green I'm going to use the I'm going to use the uh, yellow ochre and blue to give me a much warmer darker green to come into here which will link it back with that sky just leaving this lighter green glowing out Yellow ochre and the uh, ultramarine blue. 
gives me a much darker green. Quite strong colours this time, so I want a very low light going on. I haven't had to use any Prussian blue yet, you'll notice, so I've managed to get by with just these these colours at the moment. Darker still. Take my ultramarine, a little touch of burnt sienna. At this rate I won't need the um, Prussian blue at all. I'm now managing with my darks just for these. Just flicking in these darker reeds. Well, they're coming down here now. And there's slightly deeper trees too that are over the horizon line here. Get back, cat! Stupid animal. That makes the blue in the background seem a little bit uh, lighter as well. Right, now talking of small brushes, we take that small brush. We'll start to put some of these finer reeds in. Just show what they're reflecting down a bit. And up here as well we need to start dragging up these little reeds and rushes that are coming up on the top edge here. windmill was and the top of the windmill is here. The edge of it's just there and we'll just mark it out about a bit. And then we've got the, the sail coming up the old what's left of the sail anyway here. Right. Now let's make a go on the boat. While things are drying off a bit, I'm going to take some yellow ochre again. Just give that seal a coat of the yellow ochre first of all. I'm going to do the same with the boat. Now actually, I'm going to use it's my I'm going to use some um, Indian red now rather than the burnt sienna. I thought I was going to get away with it, but no. I just want a slightly redder sail there. And I'll come back to my burnt sienna and we'll just darken down a bit. of the, the blue again. And let's look at the leading edges of the darker things here. Brown sail in the sunset and straight in with the about Sienna down here with the boat to make it quite dark. Mm 
back again to our dry brush work. And we'll just try and simulate a little bit of the, the warmer colour into here. If that's reflecting down just slightly there. warmer in some places. taking some Prussian and some brown. I'm going to use those very darks at last. So Prussian and a little bit of burnt sienna. We'll just darken down some of these areas that little bit to this evening sunset. Boat's got to be darkened down too. Just indicating the back of the boat and just indicating the bow of the boat just slightly. And then the figures that are in there too. again. Darker colour. We hope it's just dry enough now that I can try and get a bit of the mast in. I just find these darker bits of reflection along under the boat. And you start to see that we can make a, a watercolour that's very effective and quite quickly. Here we've got a post and actually bits of reed coming up. Right. As we do painting, sometimes we need to adjust them, and I think I would like to have a lot more warmth into this sail. Um, so I'm going to take some rows. And just give it a glaze of rose, just to give it a bit more warmth. I feel that sail will be nicer. There we are. I could get away with a limited palette, but if you can't quite, then you know, if the painting needs it, you do it. So I'll have a bit of rose over that just to give that sail that glow that it hasn't quite got at the moment, or didn't have until now. Right, we'll just tidy up down here. Put some white that needs sorting. And then I want to try playing with a little bit of white paint to see if we can just bring some of that sparkle back again. Right, I'm just going to put a little bit of white acrylic into a separate palette just over my watercolour palette, I don't want the two getting mixed up. And I'm going to start playing with a little bit of white paint around the place now just to uh, bring some highlights back and I couldn't, this paper's been so absorbent that I've had trouble getting it to play fair so I'm going to get it to do so by adding my whites back in again. sparkles here and there just to bring the boat back there and uh, we need to do, start doing the same across in the background now so I'm going to sparkle my dry brushwork across 
using the brush sideways on, I'll just bring these bits of light all the way through, dry brushing it over the top edge. So we don't want the paint too thick, but equally if it's too thin it won't work either. So a little bit more water into that, just to get it flowing. We'll start to bring that back behind here to reflect through these. And while we're on that, the windmill just is a little bit over the top here, catching the light. And we've got to try and get these lights back behind the boat again. Just over the surface of the, the water sparkling there like that. So it's an interesting way to see how dry brush work can be used, isn't it? Bring a lot of these whites back again. Right through here, where so much of that was just too dark. Yes, I would have liked to have done the whole of this um, with just watercolour at first, but sometimes things don't work out as you expect, or the materials don't quite do as you hope they're going to do or want, and you've got to come back then and, and do something with it like this. So you look, I'm using these verticals as well as horizontals on the, on the water, on the dry brush. needs must and uh, we change and play with the techniques to bring a painting back or get it right I think the thing here is to look at how I'm handling the dry brush work putting paint over as well as putting the, the light paint as well, as well as I did the dark paint earlier and we can then also play with these verticals too coming into the water and places. So they're only bits of paper after all so we can afford to play around a bit. I now want to come back into this and just try softening it a bit by sponging some areas out. Just taking this down a little bit with a sponge and see if we can get a slightly lighter or responsive sky up here. The sky is a little bit heavy so we'll just get a feeling of it being a bit lighter by trying to just sponge out a bit. This paper, as I say, is so absorbent that it doesn't really allow that very much. We'll give it a go. Let's try and rub out some of this distance. I'm going to rub it in lines like this to try and get a feeling of the 
rays of the light coming down and through, just to soften it a fraction. Although there is a few more. Rub well, just across a few more verticals into this. And here we are with the uh, painting dry. This is now pulling together a bit better, I feel. We'll get a mount onto it now. Thank you.